Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello. How is everyone doing today? How are you? I am fine, teacher. Nice. Happy to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. We are back again. We are back to another week. This is the third week of this module um, with new topics, with a new section. We are going to start section four, which is great. I'm just going to give everyone a few minutes so that everyone can join. But I will start by sharing my screen so that we can start going over the agenda. Right now we are three people. So I'm just going to give everyone a few minutes to join. All right. Let's see. All righty. So in previous weeks, in previous weeks, we've talked about the past participle with adjectives, with nouns during week one, describing problems uh, with keep and need, um, causation with prepositions, the passive, ten, uh, the passive voice with prepositions. Um, and we've also talked about infinitive clauses and phrases. We reviewed proper intonation, we review rather and would prefer, and by plus J round. Then we did the midterm test last Thursday. So last Thursday, we finished section three. And today we are ready to start with section four. Let's see, I see that we are six people already. Hello everyone, good evening to everyone who just joined. Um, and so I was telling you that today we are going to be starting section four. As you can see, como pueden ver, sec uh, la sección 4, la section 4 has very few topics, tiene poquitos temas. So, because it has uh, very few topics, we are going to cover the platform and then we are going to do some additional vocabulary. Un vocabulario adicional que yo considero que les puede servir. Um, for your work environment, for your office, for your job. Um, and so I have this uh, um, this section of vocabulary prepared as well. After we are done with our topic for today, which is have or get. Um, and this is used for services. So you might have heard. Hello to everyone that just joined. Good evening. Hello. Um, we are talking about the agenda. We are reviewing the agenda and we were talking about section four and how we will be reviewing have or get about services. So you might have heard sometimes when you are watching movies or when you are, uh, maybe you have read it when you're reading a book or the newspaper or any, any text really, um, that they mention getting their nails done, getting their hair done, right? Y usualmente en español decimos voy a ir a que me hagan el pelo, voy a ir a que me hagan las uñas. So that's, that's exactly what it means. No decimos voy a ir a que me haga, ta, 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 sino voy a ir a que me hagan el pelo, voy a ir a que me hagan las uñas. So that's what getting your hair done, getting your nails done means. That's what getting uh, something fixed in your house. En ese sentido es muy similar cuando hablamos de un idioma, de un modismo muy casual. Si decimos, voy a llamar para que me vengan a arreglar la tele. So, 
I'm going to get my TV fixed, right? Get my TV fixed. Y de esa manera hacemos que la oración sea más corta. Instead of saying, um, I am going to call the electrician so that they can come and uh, check the television and repair the television. No, solo vamos a decir, I need to get my TV fixed, right? I need to get my fridge fixed. Es una forma más casual de decirlo. Y es la manera en la que usualmente lo van a escuchar. So, we are 12 people now. I see 12 people. Hello, everyone. Hello to you if you just joined. Um, we actually, we have a special guest today. We have my dog here. This is our special guest for today. He is here with us today. Él está con nosotros este día. Él está dando la clase también. All right. So, so if you hear him, let him be. Okay. He's not, he's trying to learn as well. He's trying to learn too. All right. So hello to everyone that maybe just joined. Um, I hope that you're having a good evening. I hope that you had a good weekend. Uh, we are going to start with section four today. So let's go ahead and move on to uh, section four. Section four is all about have or get things done, right? But before we go into the topic, we are going to watch the introductory video. So let me check if I'm sharing my audio with you. I think I am. Okay. Yep. So let's go ahead and watch this video and then we'll discuss it. <gasps> Hello? Yes, Pat. I'm working on that right now. Uh-huh. Okay. By five o'clock. Yes, okay. Thanks. What's up, Carmen? You look really stressed out. It's his job, Hugo. I'm constantly under pressure. My muscles are tense. My neck is stiff. My stomach is in knots. I just... I, I can't seem to relax. Yeah, stress is a killer. Well, one thing you could do is get some exercise. It's a great way to relieve tension. I tried that. Did it help? It's a long story. First, I tried skating. I love skating. How'd it work out? It didn't. Well, I'll say. Then I tried dance lessons. Oh, I love dancing. Me too. And so does my husband. But... But? He was a little too enthusiastic. Uh-huh. Well, have you thought about taking a yoga class? They say it's very relaxing. Yoga? Relaxing? Are you kidding me? You see this paper clip? Yes. This is what I'd look like after my yoga class. <sighs> Ouch. There's always hypnotherapy. I've tried that too. Now, every time I hear the word ocean, it's supposed to relax me. Oh, and it works. The other day, I was in a meeting. Someone started talking about the environmental problems and the world's oceans. People said the word ocean so many times that I fell asleep. Oh yeah, I heard about that. That must have been embarrassing. Now half the office knows. <sighs> Ugh. See what I mean? Need to get the hypnotherapy reversed. Or... I have an idea. You could try aromatherapy. What's that? It's like a massage, but they rub your skin with scented oils. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm allergic to perfume. <sighs> Well, uh, it might be a good idea then for you to take some time off. Go on vacation. Rent a little house on the beach or something. You know, on the ocean. The ocean? Oh, that's a good idea. 
Maybe I'll take a vacation. It's very relaxing. Lying on the beach, listening to the sounds of the ocean. 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 All right. So after watching the video, were there any words that you didn't understand that you didn't catch? Are there any expressions that maybe you didn't know? Or is everything clear? What was she trying to do? with all those exercises and sports and what was she trying to do? Anyone that wants to talk about it. Do you want to watch it again? Yeah, uh, yes, please. All right, so when we watch it again, we watch it again and try to listen to what she was trying to do, right? She did yoga, she did hypnotherapy, she did all of these things, but why? Why did she want to do that? Let's try to listen to what she wanted to achieve um, and then also listen to uh, for any expressions or any words that maybe you don't understand or you don't, don't know what they mean. You can um, put them in the chat or you can tell me after the video is over. So let's watch it again. Hello? Yes, Pat. I'm working on that right now. Uh-huh. Okay. By five o'clock. Yes, okay. Thanks. What's up, Carmen? You look really stressed out. It's his job, Hugo. I'm constantly under pressure. My muscles are tense. My neck is stiff. My stomach is in knots. I just, I, I can't seem to relax. Yeah, stress is a killer. One thing you could do is get some exercise. It's a great way to relieve tension. I tried that. Did it help? It's a long story. First, I tried skating. I love skating. How'd it work out? It didn't. Well, I'll say. Then I tried dance lessons. Oh, I love dancing. Me too. And so does my husband. But... But? He was a little too enthusiastic. Uh-huh. Well, have you thought about taking a yoga class? They say it's very relaxing. Yoga? Relaxing? Are you kidding me? You see this paper clip? Yes. This is what I'd look like after my yoga class. Ouch. There's always hypnotherapy. I've tried that too. Now, every time I hear the word ocean, it's supposed to relax me. Oh, and it works. The other day, I was in a meeting. Someone started talking about the environmental problems and the world's oceans. People said the word ocean so many times that I fell asleep. Oh yeah, I heard about that. That must have been embarrassing. Now half the office knows. <sighs> <sighs> See what I mean? Need to get the hypnotherapy reversed. Or... I have an idea. You could try aromatherapy. What's that? It's like a massage, but they rub your skin with scented oils. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm allergic to perfume. <sighs> Well, uh, it might be a good idea then for you to take some time off. Go on vacation. Rent a little house on the beach or something. You know, on the ocean. 
the ocean? Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll take a vacation. It's very relaxing. Lying on the beach, listening to the sounds of the ocean. 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 All right. Now that we have watched it again, what was she trying to do with doing all that stuff? She was trying to relax because she is stressed out. Yeah, she was trying to relax because she's stressed out. Why? Why is she so stressed? Because she works under pressure. She works under pressure, right? I think we we've all felt that like I need a break I really can't do this anymore like either on Monday or by the end of the week right breaking point stress so yeah she was trying to relax a little bit all right I see that we are 17 people cuando comenzamos a verlo I think we had about 12 so let me just recap a little bit a uh, brief introduction to everyone that uh, maybe joined a little bit ago. Um, good evening. We reviewed our mm -hmm. agenda. Hi, good evening. Um, <laughs> we are right now watching the introductory video or the introduction video to section four. Today we are starting section four and we are going to be talking about actions or services that you get um, or have done. Right. So when you've heard, for example, on TV, I need to get my hair done. I need to get my nails done. I need to get my TV fixed. Right. So es el equivalente a que digamos, voy a hacerme el pelo, voy a hacerme las manos, voy a pedir que me vengan a ver la tele. Right. So it's a very, it's a casual way of saying that you need it to. Um, have a stylist do your hair to um, that you need to have someone repair your, um, your your TV or fridge or whatever so you can um, say or you can ask someone hey um, can I have you check my TV to see what's wrong with it hey can I get you to fix my sink my sink, me, um, el lavadero, right? Can I get you to fix my sink? So um, that's how we talk about getting services. And it's the most usual way that you will hear people talk about getting services or getting things done. And we will also look at some additional vocabulary. Why? Um, porque. As you can see, in esta sección, we have fewer topics. We have fewer topics. We have about one topic per day. So I wanted to throw in some additional vocabulary that we are going to be reviewing. We'll review more phrases with get, no necesariamente para servicios, not necessarily about getting services done to us or to our house but also other expressions where you will use phrases with get, right? Pero we'll review that in un momentito. Y también les quería compartir some additional vocabulary que ustedes pueden ocupar in your office or in your workplace or with your business partners or maybe in your day-to-day -day work day, right? So I wanted to share this um, extra vocabulary with you just because I think, I think, I'm not sure, but I think that we will have some extra time and we can review some things that are useful to you, right? In your work day. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? Do, does anyone have any questions on the video? No. Any words or expressions you don't know? No, it's okay. Awesome. All righty. So we do have another video that we will watch. This video is about 
how we are going to form the sentences with have or get whatever service done, right? Your hair, your nails, um, getting something repaired in your house, um, getting your uh, shoes fixed. I don't know if people still fix shoes. I think we just buy new ones, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, we are going okay. to learn on how to form these sentences. So let's go ahead and listen, and then we will try to make these sentences ourselves. Okay. I want to remind you that in English, we can say the same idea in another way. Does active and passive voice ring a bell? Stay and find out. Page 59, exercise three, grammar focus. Have or get something done. Use have or get to describe a service performed for you by someone else. Active. Do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? You can have Hazel's personal services fix your bike. You can get a repair shop to fix your bike. Passive. Do you know where I can have my bike fixed? You can have your bike fixed by Hazel's personal services. You can get your bike fixed at a repair shop. I know this is not new for you. Active and passive, remember? We have told you that in English we may say the same sentence in another way. This time we will learn how to use active and passive using have or get to describe a service performed for you by someone else. As always, let's work on active first. You can have a repair shop fix your bike. We're using have plus someone plus base form of the verb. Let's type an example using get. You can get a repair shop to fix your bike. Get plus someone plus infinitive verb. Moving on, we have passive. You can have or get your bike fixed. It's optional to write at or buy a shop. Have or get plus object plus past participles. It's optional to use at or buy. Alrighty. So, as you can see, let's go back to the examples. Oops, let's go back here. All right, so additional to um, the rules that we reviewed for active and passive voice, what other differences in the active voice can you see? Hay una diferencia adicional between um, have and get in the active voice. Um, when you when we are forming the sentence, ¿qué diferencia pueden ver entre have and get in the active voice? The verb in get is an infinitive. That is right. Thank you, Marce. So when we use get in the active voice, we use the verb in the infinitive form. So. Como ya les he dicho, no quiero que nos um, trabemos, right? Y I don't want you thinking every time you're doing the sentence. Okay, so in the active voice, when I'm talking about have and get, I'm going to have to use the infinitive. I don't want you doing that. Pero sí es importante que eh, ustedes logren verlo para que cuando estén haciendo una lectura o sobre todo cuando estén haciendo un texto, escribiendo, comunicándose de manera escrita con alguien, you can make sure that you are typing it correctly. Al mm -hmm. momento de escribir es mucho más notorio las reglas gramáticas que cuando estamos hablando, right? So um, I don't want you to get stuck on it, but it's important that you know it. So when we are using the active voice, which is the usual, most common way to speak, um, we will say, uh, do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? Do you know where I can get someone to do my hair? Right? Do you, um, you can have your hair done 
at this uh, lawn next door, right? You can have uh, your, um, I don't know, your nails done in the mall, at the mall that's down the street, right? You can get someone to do your nails for very cheap um, down the street, right? Cuando hablamos del passive voice, ya sabemos que invertimos un poco la oración. So do you know where I can have my bike fixed? Llevamos este verbo al final en la pregunta. Es como que dijéramos en español, ¿sabes eh, dónde puedo encontrar a alguien que arregle mi bicicleta? ¿O sabes dónde alguien puede eh, arreglar mi bicicleta? Right? En español no es tanto el cambio. Pero en inglés sí tenemos, do you know where I can have my bike fixed? ¿En qué escenario se usa cada uno? Realmente el passive voice, it's a little bit more formal. Pero no es extraño escucharlo en una conversación casual, right? It's common as well. Es más cuestión de preference o de zonas. Hay zonas eh, en que hablan más con passive voice. Hay zonas en que hablan más con active voice. Depende um, how formal they are. Um, for example, um, states like California are a lot more casual. So they would say, do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? And then there are some other states maybe up north or when you go to Europe and they will use the passive voice a lot more. But both are correct. Ambas maneras estarían correctas. Okay. Any questions so far? Not right now. <laughs> All right. Not right yes. now, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I think you've already seen how to do the active voice and the passive voice, right? You're clear. On, how, on the difference of active and passive voice? Mm -hmm. mm. In my case, I try to study because all time I have work with the active and passive, I feel more uh, uh, complicated passive. I don't know why, but I, I feel complicated when I use passive. But I, I study to mm -hmm. understand more, okay? That's good. That's good. A good exercise is to try to say the same thing we are saying mm -hmm. in the active voice to say it in the passive voice. So, for mm -hmm. example, if I were to say, I, um, where can I get someone to do my hair? How would you say this in the passive voice? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you know where? Do you know where I I can? Do you know where I can? Uh, I can get or have. Uh, you can use get. You can use have. You okay, really do you don't know, have to use the same one. Do you know where I can have? No, uh, yes, have do my hair or to do. Remember that when we are using the passive voice, we're going to use the past my. participle. Uh, done. So we're do, done, that's right. Okay. Okay, do you know where I can do you know where I can get? No, yes, I can get done my hair or my hair done. My uh, hair, my hair done. There we okay. go. My hair done. Where I can okay. get my hair done. Okay. But what happened to someone? Donde se fue el someone? Uh, By someone. By someone, that's right. Right? Uh, Do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? Do you know where I can have my bike fixed? Mm -hmm. Podemos quitarlo mm -hmm. o podemos incluirlo by using by. 
si queremos ser específicos, right? Wow. We can take it off, it's but optional. it's optional. But yeah. you can also, porque digamos que aquí estamos hablando someone, right? Mm -hmm. Pero si decimos, where can I get, um, I don't know, Marcus. Digamos que es un estilista específico que yo quiero que mm -hmm. me atienda, right? Where I, Where can I get Marcus to do my hair? No sé dónde él trabaja, no sé dónde él hace sus servicios, but I want him to do my hair. So mm -hmm. if I were to say this sentence in the passive voice, do you know where I can get my hair done by Marcus? Ahí mm -hmm. no lo omitimos porque quiero que sea él, right? So hay circunstancias. Yes. Okay. Y la manera en la que lo agregaríamos, a quién o por quién o en qué lugar específico, es usando by, by whom. ¿Quién lo va a hacer? Mm -hmm. By home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we can try to do those exercises uh, so that we can um, locate the passive voice in an easier way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah. that's good practice. That's excellent practice. All right. Any other questions anyone might have before we move on? No questions? Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to put the information to the test by doing some exercises. We have eight exercises here. And we are actually going to be um, having some volunteers today. So what I want uh, the volunteers to do, whoever wants to participate, is mm -hmm. I want you to, I'll do an example. Voy a hacer un ejemplo. Number one. Okay. So I'll call you as, an, as a volunteer, right? You'll say that you want to participate and I'll ask you to read one exercise. And you will okay. read. Okay, number one, shorten my skirt. What we need to do is choose the correct, uh, choose using the active form of have yeah. and get. The active form. Vamos a usar mm -hmm. active form. Entonces, what you need to have is shorten my skirt. So you will read, vamos a leer, number one, shorten my skirt. Y vamos a mm -hmm. leer las dos posibles respuestas. Okay. Number one, shorten my skirt. Do mm -hmm. you know where I can get someone to shorten my skirt? O, mm -hmm. Or do you know where I can get someone to short my skirt? Okay. And then you will tell me what is the correct one, number one or number two. Ya ahí podemos responder todos. Después de que la persona haya leído las ambas opciones, everyone can answer if you want to, if we should choose number one or number two. Number one. Mm -hmm. All right, so do you know where I can get someone to shorten my skirt? Or do you know where I can get someone to short my skirt? Recordemos que vamos a usar active voice. Okay. Using the active form That's of that. have and get. Okay. Which one would it be? Mm -hmm. Veo que dicen number two, number one. Active is number two. Uh, second statement. Is active. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. Let's yes. do number two. Who wants to do number two? ¿Quién quiere leer number two? Me, Alexander. Go ahead. <laughs> cut my hair. Do you know where I can get someone to cut my hair? Do you know where I can I where can I have someone to cut my hair? And what would be the correct one in the active voice? Okay, for me or the other, the, the older classmate. Number I, two. I, or number one. For me or for the other? Oh, if you want to answer, you can answer. What does everyone think? Number one or number two? Number one. Number two. Number one. Number one. Number yes, one? Number one. You know what I can get someone to put my hand. All right, let's do number one. Recuerden que igual we're always going to review the exercises. I see one and one. All right, cool. Who wants to do number three? Um, Go ahead. Do you 
do you know where I can get someone to repair my watch? Or do you know where I can have someone to repair my watch? I think it's number one. Number one, what does everyone else think? Me too, number one. Number one, yes. All yeah. right, cool. Let's choose number one and move to <clears throat> number four. Who wants to read number four? Uh, me too, sure. Go ahead, please. Fix my scholar. Do you know where I can get someone to fix my scholar? Do you know where I can have someone to fix my scholar? What do you think? Number two. Number two. Do you where I can have someone Number to fix two. my scholar? Number two. Number two. All yes. right. Let's yes, pick number two. Who wants to do number five? May I, teacher? Please. Yes. Take my passport photo. Do you know where I can get someone to take my passport photo? Do you know where I can have someone to take my passport passport photo? Number one. Number, number one. one. All right, let's choose number, number one. one. Perfect. And who wants to read number six? Who wants to do number six, Mass massage my neck? Me. Go ahead. Massage my neck. Do you know where I can get someone to massage my neck? Or do you know where I can have someone to message my neck? I think that the correct is the first one. All right. Do you know where I can get someone to massage my neck? That's correct. All righty. Perfect. And let me just do a parenthesis here. Un parenthesis, repito. This word is pronounced massage. Massage. Because it's yeah. taken from French, um, and they were too lazy to change it, so it's pronounced massage. Ah, uh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Lots of massage. words are actually taken from French, so French is a very perfect. old language, and then English was invented, and here we are. All right, that was just a fact. Number seven, who wants to do number seven? I, I I can do it. <laughs> uh, do you know where I can uh, clean my ja leather jacket? Do you know where I can get someone to clean my leather jacket? Or do you know where I can have someone to clean my leather jacket? I think the correct is number two. Number two. Number two. Nice. Okay, let's pick number two then. And we have one last one, number eight. Who wants to read number eight? Me, teacher. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I think you're muted. You're muted. Sorry, teacher. <laughs> no worries, no worries, go ahead. Okay. Take care of my pet while I'm away. Do you know where I can get someone that take care of my pets while I'm away? Do you know where I can have someone to take care of my pets while I'm away? And number two. Do you know where I can have someone to take care of my pets? Nice, thank you so much, Katia. All right, so we have chosen an answer for each uh, exercise. I was also reviewing the answers that people were giving in the chat. So we have chosen an answer for everyone and we will review. We will review yeah. if we are right and we will review if maybe we have someone, uh, uh, if we have one that's not correct. Okay. So we are yeah. missing one. Wow. Which Number one, one is the first one. I yes. 
Mm. So let's review. Shorten my skirt. Do you know where I can get someone to shorten my skirt? Or do you know where I can get someone to short my skirt? So if we were using the active form, why do you think this is? Maybe I because think, uh, shorting, uh, sorry, right. maybe because oh. shorting, shorting is uh, the action of short, but I'm not sure. You are absolutely correct. That's brilliant. Um, es correcto. That's, that's awesome. So it's the action of shortening to making it short, right? Porque we cannot say that I want to get someone to short my skirt. Because short, it's an adjective, right? It's not an action. So do you know where I can get someone to shorten my skirt, right? We are not actually using the passive voice. Esto no es el passive voice, porque si no, ¿cómo diríamos? Does, does someone know how we would use the passive voice with this one? Short. I don't know. <laughs> no worries. So if I were using the passive voice, I would say, do you know where I can get someone to, where I can have my skirt shortened? Or do you know where I can have my skirt shortened by someone, right? So remember when we are using the passive voice, oftentimes the verb in the past participle <laughs> will go at the end, right? Por eso es este caso the past participle of shorten. Shorten, if we were to use this as uh, the base form of the verb, usaríamos shorten igual. Pero where I can get my skirt shortened, shortened. Okay, thank you. It's a regular verb. Irregular. Yeah. Um, it's a complicated verb. <laughs> it's more, because short is more of an adjective than it is a verb. So it's yeah. kind of a complicated one. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's right. Uh, see, that's right. So it is a past participle, lo que nos comentaba Leymar en el chat, pero estamos hablando de la acción de shortening it, de cortarla o hacerla más corta. Entonces realmente la oración no está en passive voice, siempre está en active, solo es ese verbo que está en past participle para explicar la acción to making it short, como lo dijo, y me parece que fue Sergio, if I'm not mistaken, la acción de encogerlo, right? So la oración como tal no está en passive voice, it's just that verb that's using the past participle. Y he did something that's super important y es usar contexto. Eso es algo super, creo que ya se los han dicho hasta el aburrimiento, pero es la realidad. Um, we can know all of the rules. We can uh, memorize all of the things, pero lo más importante siempre va a ser que utilicemos el contexto en las oraciones que estemos hablando o en las conversaciones que estemos leyendo. Porque solo así, entonces vamos a decir, ok, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense, right? Pero en este caso es porque es ese verbo específicamente o cualquier otro verbo que pudiese que aplicar allí tendría que estar en pasado participio. Podría ser otro verbo. Podría ser otro verbo eh, que requiriese que fuese una acción, por decirlo así. Porque aquí no estamos usando la oración en pasivo, sino que estamos hablando de que algo se encoja, right? que alguien me lo encoja o que alguien me lo corte. Eh, no estamos diciendo que alguien solo um, lo vaya a reparar, sino que es una acción como, como tal, right? Podría ser otro verbo, no necesariamente shorten, podría ser que lo alargue, lengthen, right? Eh, y así, no necesariamente por ser shorten, pero en este caso se da el contexto de que lo que quiero es que me lo encojan. Entonces, ese verbo, El solito ya está conjugado sin importar si la oración está en activo o en pasivo. Porque va a pasar algo. Uh, 
Alrighty. Pero es un excelente ejemplo. Un super, super, super great example. Um, les voy a enviar más. Les voy a enviar más. Lástima que no tengo ahorita así como a la mano para que podamos. Lo que me gustaría que hiciéramos es que hagamos la comparación. Hagamos unos ejercicios así como de que lo que estuvimos haciendo de transferir oraciones from active to passive voice. Um, and then we can also review some exercises like this one in donde hay algunos verbos que están conjugados solitos prácticamente sin tener en cuenta el, el, rest, el, el tiempo de la oración active o passive, right? O el tense. Okay. Es un poquito más complicado, pero ya no vamos, ya por eso ya vamos entrando avanzado, ya estamos pre-advanced, por algo ya estamos llegando por aquí. In, in the video, you said that when we use get, the verb is in infinity, but in this exercise, uh, all sentences are using infinity with have to. Yeah, but uh, let's see. Do you know where I can have someone to fix my scooter? You are absolutely right. Marce has made a super great point. And that is correct. Es correcto. Esto no tendría que estar aquí. Do you know where I can have someone fix my scooter? When we use have, we don't need to use to. ¿En mm -hmm. qué otro ejemplo está? Veamos. Tenemos el number four. Las que están incorrectas no les vamos a contar porque por algo están incorrectas, right? Pero let's see. Do you know where I can have, get, get have, get, get, have someone, okay, number seven, in number eight, okay, chill. This is super important, cuando noten cosas así, it's super important para que podamos corregir las platforms. So I don't design it, right? But I can send the feedback. So, hey, this is kind of like not what the grammar rule that we just reviewed says. Y es correcto lo que Marce dice, when we use have, Uh -huh. Y es como una exception que veíamos hace unas clases pasadas. No es que vamos a decir, eh, do you know where I can have someone to take care of my pets? Y la gente va a decir, uy, eso está incorrecto, right? Cuando estemos hablando. Pero sí es un poco innecesario. Es más una reducción de eh, Oxford's or, or the prepositions en este caso. So it's not necessary. Marce tiene toda la razón, como lo acabamos de ver. I can have someone take care of my pets. Sería lo mejor al decirlo. Si alguien, pues lo ven así como can have someone to take care. Ahí les va a decir como, uy, eso está incorrecto. Pero sí, lo mejor siempre es decir, can I have someone take care. Sin, el, sin necesidad de poner to. Okay. So... That feedback is going back to me para poder decirle a los señores inglés corporativos so we can make this better. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Alrighty. Any other comments or questions? No. Cool. Awesome. That is great. Alrighty. Okay. So... That being said, with that, we have watched um, some videos on the have or get about services topic. Y quiero tomarme un momentito to review with you some additional get expressions. Estas son oraciones adicionales que ustedes pueden encontrarse que usan the verb get or phrases with get que son oraciones que pueden encontrarse en situaciones very um, casual or in a very um, native language, kind of. So, um, I would like uh, for some people to help me read. We will read the um, explanation and we will also read the example. So, who wants to read number one? Me, Alexander. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, get, uh, get around to every 25 the time to do something. 
I must go around to visiting grandma and seeing how she is. Nice, thank you so much, Alexander. So get around to, I need to get around to doing my homework. I need to get around to um, paying my bills. I need to get around to visiting my parents. So you need to make time for it, right? Hmm. Estas son expresiones. So mm -hmm. this is something that you can hear very often or very often. Um, and maybe if you don't know the meaning of it, you won't make sense of what they are trying to say. But this is what it means. If, if you hear someone saying, I need to get around to doing my homework, they need to mm -hmm. make time to do that. All right. Okay. Who wants to do number two? I have a question. In yes. this get round two, uh, you have to use the verb in ing form. For this expression, yes. I was get around to doing my homework, to paying my bills, to cleaning the house. Siempre se usa el ing for the verb. All the time. All the time, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Excellent question. All right. Who wants to read number two? Me, Juan Jose? Of course, go ahead. Okay, uh, get away with something. I was late to work today, but I got away with it because my boss was off sick today. Escaping That's right. The consequence. Escaping the consequences. So you can leave clean. Right, you can get away with it. Um, maybe you've heard in the movie, he got away with it. He did it and he got away with it, or they did it and they got away with it. Or in Scooby-Doo type of thing, like I would have gotten away with it if you didn't that, that, that. So if you did something bad or something that you weren't supposed to do, but no one realized it or no one figured it out, you can get away with it, right? Teacher, for example, every night I must clean in the dishes, but tonight get away. <laughs> but you I got away with it? Class. You got away with it because you were in class? That's fun. Yeah, that's a good example. So if you get away with it just because you're in class, yeah, you got to escape. You got to escape from doing the dishes. Nice. All righty. What about number three? Who wants to read number three? May I, teacher? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, get on with someone to have a good relationship. I didn't get on with my old manager. She was a strange and very mean. That's right. So having a good time with someone, being friends or having a good relationship with someone, right? So um, I get on really well with my family. I don't get on well with my family. Um, I get on really well with my neighbor, with my coworker, or I don't really get on with my husband's family, for example, right? Having a good relationship. Alrighty, number four, who wants to read number four? Anyone that wants to read them? Yeah, go ahead. We have to get through three hours of meetings before we could go lounge, get to enter and survive. Nice. Okay. All right. Let me just plug in my computer because it was about to die. Okay. So we had to get through three hours of meetings before we could go to lunch. Get through. So you have to uh, complete it before you can do anything else. So I have to get through the traffic before I can get to the office. I have to get through... Um, of this dinner before I can go home, of this office dinner. I have to get through all my paperwork 
before I can go home, right? Having to go, uh, having to complete something. Thank you. Alrighty. And finally, who wants to do number five? Um, me. Go ahead. Um, we should get rid of some. Okay, uh, let's start again. <laughs> we should get rid of some of those old boxes in the attic. Throw away or remove. Throw away or remove. So get rid of. Throw it out. Throw it away. It's trash, right? So I need to get rid of um, all of this papers that are in, on my desk because it's making a mess. I need to get rid of it. Um, I just have a big uh -huh. um, big box of things I don't use anymore. I need to get rid of it. So I need to trash it or I need to uh, give it away or just take it out of wherever it is, right? It's not useful anymore. Does anyone have any questions with this expression uh, using get? No. All good. It's okay. On the WhatsApp group. I want to know the meaning of the word read. Only read. the word read. Nice. Okay. So read um, in itself, solito, no significa mucho, right? Mm -hmm. Pero si decimos get rid of, junto, get rid of kind of. Entrando un poquito al terreno de phrasal verbs. <laughs> um, get rid of, deshacernos de algo. So I can say, I need to get rid of uh, the trash in my room. Esto deshacerme o botar, right? Get rid, desaparecer. Tirarlo, botarlo. Get rid of, deshacernos de. That's right. That's what it means. Creo que ya viendo un poquito de phrasal verbs, que de hecho los vamos a continuar viendo más adelante. I think tomorrow. Yes, mm -hmm. tomorrow is phrasal verb day. Okay. okay. So, yep. Entrando un poquito al terreno de los phrasal verbs, creo que ya eh, con lo que hayan visto so far, sabemos que hay palabras que en inglés solitas no significan nada o solitas significan una cosa y con el phrasal verb they mean a completely different thing, right? So as for example, in this case, read el solito doesn't really mean a lot. Um, but when you say get rid of, it has a concept. It means to remove something or to get something out. This is a good introduction to phrasal verbs. Good introduction to phrasal verbs. Nice, excellent introduction to phrasal verbs, um, <laughs> which is what we'll be reviewing. So phrasal verbs, um, phrases that make specific sense for specific situations in English. Um, no son quizás específicas o no tienen reglas así tan detailed. Mm -hmm. Y son phrases that you learn with time. Todavía to this day, we are still learning phrasal verbs because um, times change, right? Slang and uh, maybe um, mode distance and all of that changes with time. So mm -hmm. phrasal verbs change too, but we will learn some of the most common phrasal verbs that are still used. Um, les voy a mandar el material a WhatsApp so that we can, you can take a quick look at it before we review it here in class. Les voy a mandar, did I send you this to WhatsApp? Les envié esto a WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, cool, yeah. I want to send this over to you to WhatsApp. Let me stop sharing and I'll send it over. Um, mm -hmm. No tuvimos chance de ver el otro, um, la otra imagen que tenía de vocabulary, but I'll send that, I'll send that and we can review it tomorrow, okay? Okay, the idea in that, in that case, memorize. No, not oh. memorize, not memorize, just review it. Um, you no, don't no, really no, have no. to. Memorize. No, but for the use uh, on the in the future when, because 
It's not the rule, it's not, it's not necessary the rule, but it's important to know about the, the phrases completely. Oh, yeah, because it's, it's important to know about it. You don't have to memorize them, but you can review it and with practice, you will remember it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know, but maybe uh, people uh, in American people just talk using these phrases, but it's not in the class. Uh, explain, hey, this is a, a, a normal class. Hey, use this or, or uh, for example, it, it, it gets rid of or, or the, the other. It, it's not normal to explain or give the class about that. Just is oh, memorize. Okay. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, so we will have the class about the phrasal verbs and how you can use it and what's the usual um, way to use them. Um, you don't have to memorize them, but we will have a class for it tomorrow. Okay. Yep. Alrighty. So I sent over the material to WhatsApp. You can review it. Uh, I'll send the phrasal verbs tomorrow and we'll talk about that tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Good night.